In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at how we use the Exchange Server Requirements Calculator to plan for mailbox databases. First thing we need to do is we just need to download it. It's a free download from Microsoft. So I've downloaded version 10 of the calculator and we'll just launch this up. This will launch up Excel. Once we get in, we just need to fill out some of the information. So the first thing we're going to have a look at here is we're just going to have a look at our Exchange Environment configuration. So if we have a look down here, what we have is Exchange Server version. Happy with Exchange Server version 2019. I'm not going to do any server role virtualization, so I'll leave that as a no. We do want a highly available deployment. We do want site resilience deployment, and we want to use Metacache database as well, which is a new bit of functionality with Exchange Server 2019. Improves performance quite a bit. However, any of these options that we wish to change, as you can see by just hovering the mouse over each of these options, it gives us some help to explain to us exactly what these settings are going to be used for. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to specify information relating to my servers. All we need to do is scroll right down towards the bottom and right down towards the bottom we have information relating to our Exchange server account. So we'll just scroll this down right down towards the bottom. Now what we will find is we'll find that Exchange server account. So we have this within here. Now in my environment what we're going to do is we're just going to modify some of these settings. I don't have eight servers, I've only got the two servers. So I'll just change that to two. And the number of DAGs that we're going to have within this organization is we're happy with one. Now, based on that information, what we'll do is we'll just modify our mailbox database copy configuration. We're going to leave the defaults, but we'll just scroll up just to see where those settings are. So back up towards the top. So what we have is we have our mailbox database copy configuration. So a total number of non-lagged database copies within our DAG. We're going to have three. Number of lagged database copies within the DAG will have one because we want to be able to revert back to previous changes if required. Number of non-lagged database copies in the secondary data center. Yep, we're happy with one. We want site resiliency. And the same with the number of lagged database copies in the secondary data center. We'll also leave that as the one. Next section we'll modify is the site resilience configuration section. And we just need to scroll along a bit just to pull that into view. So what we have for our site resilience user distribution model, we're happy with the active active. Uh, what we're going to do is if we have a look down here, we're happy with the site resilience recovery point objective of 24 hours and activation block secondary data center mailbox servers. We'll leave that as a no, but again, anything you're not sure of, just hover the mouse over and that'll give you information relating to it. Next thing we'll modify is we'll modify some of the exchange data configuration. So we'll just scroll this back across. So what we have is data overhead factor. So what we're doing at this point here is this will support rapid growth. 30% um, seems a bit much, so let's just drop that down to 25%. Happy with that. And then what we've got is we've got our mailbox moves percentage per week. Um, at this point here, 25%. Let's change that to 10 percent. Dedicated maintenance restore volume. Yeah, happy with 10. Uh, with yes. And what we'll do at this point here is for our volume free space percentage. Let's increase that. We'll increase that to 10%, uh, I think. So we're happy with what we've done there. Next thing we'll do is we'll just scroll down and we'll go to our role requirements input factors. So we can see that down here. Uh, we'll just pull this up just so we can see more information. And the first thing we'll modify is our tier one user mailbox configuration. So what we're going to do in the case of the number of these, we'll uh, specify that's 400. So 400 of them in place. We're going to project the growth to be about 10%. Then what we'll do here is total send receive capability mailbox per day. Uh, let's drop that down to, let's just say 300. Then what we'll do is just for the uh, average message size, well, we're happy with uh, 75. No, let's make that 100. So we'll make that 100. We'll leave the initial mailbox size. We'll leave the mailbox limit. We'll leave all of the other settings within here. And what we'll do is we'll just scroll this along. Uh, what we'll do is for our tier 3 users, we'll modify some of the settings for our tier 3 users. All we'll do at this point here, scroll this along just a little bit further, and all we'll do is we'll have 400 of them as well. So let's have 400 of those as well. We'll leave all the defaults, we'll scroll this back across, and let's have some tier 2 users as well, so we'll scroll this down a bit. And again, just in this organization, we'll have 400. And again, just for this purpose, we'll just leave the defaults here as well.
Next thing we'll do is we'll just name our servers in this organization. So I've scroll this down. We've already got some server names that have been inserted as part of this calculator. But what we'll do is we'll modify them so they'll meet up to our organization. Scroll this down. Servers will be further down. And all we'll do is we'll just modify the names of these servers. Now we'll call our servers LON EX1, LON EX2 for London, and then we've got Berlin EX1, Berlin EX2. So we're happy with the information relating to the server, we're happy with the information relating to the database lag copies and availability. So the next thing we'll do is we'll look at our role requirements. And within our role requirements, we'll just specify some of the information within here as well. So based off the information that we entered into our input, what we can see under the role requirements, we can see that based off the information we put in place, so we knew it was one DAG, but if we have a look down here, so we can see information relating to the information we typed in. So we can see the tier one, tier two, tier three. If we look at the distribution tab, it gives us a nice diagram of how we should set our servers up. If we then look at the role requirements, we can see information related to the role requirements. Our backup requirements are in here as well, and then our replication space as well. So what we've got at this point here is based off our design, we can come into the role requirements calculator, we can input information, and based off the information we input, what this will do is this will give us requirements to how we should specify our exchange servers, how we should configure our exchange servers, and we can then use that to build the actual exchange environment for our organization. And that's the end of this demonstration. I do encourage you to have a look at this. It is quite useful. Um, and thank you very much.